I was born in a little town called Greenville, Texas, by my biological birth parents, Jess May Turner and Anthony Lee Henry Sr. They were a very young newlywed couple that still liked to party and drink a lot. So my grandmother's sister and her husband, Emma and Willie McCrary, they started babysitting me. And they lived in Dallas, Texas. And at this time, I was about four months old. And because of the problems that my biological parents were having at the time, they eventually made a decision to allow me to stay in Dallas on a permanent basis. So my aunt and uncle uh, became my mother and father. And at that time, they really spoiled me and took care of my every need. And they provided for me a decent living but at the same time, they was very stern. They was very strict and structured. They was really serious about school, church, and taking care of the home. As time went on, and I'm getting older, like in my teenage years, um, I began to become more and more rebellious. Um, didn't want to do the chores around the house. Didn't want to listen to my parents. And it was when uh, my parents had separated, I think about the around age 14. Uh, that's when my life just began to unravel. And I became more and more rebellious and more and more disobedient in school. And I began to experiment with smoking cigarettes. I was stealing my, my mother's cigarettes while she was, uh, was, wasn't there. And, and that led to uh, experimenting with marijuana, with weed, and also drinking and partying, hanging out with the older crowd, my cousins. And it was there uh, where I started skipping school and we would skip school and hang out. And one time, uh, while we were skipping school, we went to a local mall and got arrested for shoplifting. And they sent me to juvenile. And that's when my mother really found out how bad my life had gotten and it was a real hard time in my life and it led to um, smoking weed, drinking and partying and then ultimately I had an addiction that um, I couldn't kick. Uh, I was practicing uh, homosexuality. I was living a life uh, as a female impersonator or a cross-dresser. And, uh, and I was also smoking crack cocaine and prostituting. And my life was very dark. It was very, uh, uh, very unmanageable. And Sin had just gripped my life and it drew a wedge between me and my family and everywhere I went, I couldn't find no help, no hope, no peace. And I felt all alone and lost uh, uh, in a world that uh, I wasn't ready for because of my addiction, because of the uh, lifestyle that I had chose uh, to be a part of, uh, it was a, a very hurtful time. I was at the point in my life, I was tired, that's it. I couldn't take it no more. I had hit rock bottom. And it was at that point in time when two guys came and handed me a flyer 
that said, if you're hooked and want to change, call this number. We have a free men's home. And I really didn't understand at that time what that really meant. But I took the flyer, and after I got finished getting high and getting drunk, I called that number. And the person on the other end of the phone told me all I needed to do was believe and really want to change and really want to get my life together and stop doing drugs and alcohol and only Jesus could help me and if I believe in Jesus that he could help me and and I made that step of faith I came into the men's home I think October the 10th 2002 and that's when my life began to change God began to do a work in my heart and in my life. And it was a process, it wasn't easy. It was a process. It took a lot of prayer. It took a lot of of getting into the word of God. It took a lot of worship and praise and just cultivating the presence of God in order to change because I had to have a change of mind. But it was a process, but I'm glad I made that choice. So now you have to spend all your energy and time in investing in empowering everybody that's a part of what you have. That's a part of the, the children. My name is Pastor Anthony Anderson, senior pastor of Living Word uh, Fellowship of Texas. And um, today I just want to share with you the vision of the ministry where we, uh, it's a discipleship ministry where we help men and women who are struggling with substance abuse and drugs and alcohol. We bring them in into the preaching of the gospel. The lives are being changed. And, uh, and actually, uh, the name of the game is become spiritual parents. The Bible says we have a lot of leaders, but few fathers. And so and so we bring people in, we feed them, we clothe them, we house them, and we disciple them. Some go back to get in the workforce, some want to go to full-time ministry. And at that time, what we do, we send them to Bible school and begin to further their development in the gospel. And the name of the game is to launch out churches and homes in every other part of the country in Texas. And and also in other states, such as Arkansas. And I have a spiritual son by the name of Pastor Anthony Henry, Bishop Henry, who's been planted in Arkansas. And he's been in the ministry ever since uh, about 15 years, 17, almost 20 years, actually. And he came in, tore from the floor up, but had a desire to give his life to Christ. He was obedient to the calling. And, and he's given himself to be trained and be disciple. And throughout the years, uh, he have paid the price, character being developed, and now he's in Fort Smith, Arkansas, doing the great work of God, him and his uh, lovely wife, Tamika, where God is using their lives tremendously. And, and, and his vision, our vision, is to open up homes and churches throughout Fort Smith or through the state of Arkansas, wherever God leads him. And, and, and just so excited for the work that he's doing there and God's going to use him in a tremendous and mighty way. And there are other churches that, that he able to train, disciple, and it just don't start with the home, but as well as church, the guy has anointed him at a time as such to just do a great work in the state of Arkansas. You know, and so many times we we'll go through the neighborhoods, we go through where the most crime infested, drug infested, neighborhoods are, it's, it needs so much help. It needs, it needs, you know, the answer to these neighborhoods is Jesus. Nothing else can help. More money, better better houses, better buildings, more job opportunities. It's, it's not going to solve the problem, solve the issue. What's going to solve the issue is Jesus in the hearts of of mankind, changing the old way of life 
into a new way of life. That's the only thing that would change. That's the only way, only thing that would set the community free lives. Our young boys, our young men, our young girls, our young women, our homes and our communities abroad. That's the only thing that will, that's the only solution is Jesus. And that's why it's so many uh, other avenues that people try to take in order to be a solution to the problem, to the epidemic in society, and nothing works. Nothing works, nothing works. And everything is a band-aid and it's a mask to the situation. But Jesus is the only answer to for the world today. In these streets, you have drug addiction, you have crack addiction, meth addiction, K2, you have alcohol addiction, you have homelessness that's running rampant all over the neighborhood, you have prostitution that's running wild. Nothing else will change it, nothing else can help it. The only thing that will help it is Jesus. There has to be a change of heart and change of mind. It can't just be a change of house or a change of car or a change of job. It has to be a change of mind, a change of heart. That's where it all began. That's where it all started, right here. Right here in one of the roughest parts of Dallas, Texas. Right here in the heart of South Dallas. Right here is where all of my drug addiction, prostitution, alcoholism, in and out of jails. This is where it happened. I was over 15 years of my life struggling with drugs and alcohol, strung out, depressed. Every night I would come here and I would get money to hustle and get drugs and just destroy my life. My life was hopeless. My life had no, no direction. I was hurt on the inside and looking for a quick fix. And this was my quick fix. This was streets right here. Lego, Lego and Spring. This is where all the addiction, everything began to take place. But also this is where God spoke to me. This is where God spoke to me and let me know that he had a purpose and a plan for my life. That he wanted to use my life. Right here in the roughest part of the city, South Dallas. This is where I finally found out who God was. In the mighty name of Jesus, forgive me, Lord, of all my sins. Wash and cleanse me with your son, Jesus. Jesus, forgive me. I need you every day of my life. Cleanse my heart. an encounter with God no matter what we've done what we have been through the only thing that can get us out of it is an encounter God want us to have an encounter with his son Jesus Christ and this is where my encounter came from this is where my encounter started it started right here on Canal and Lego it was a typical Sunday morning, I had been up on a drug crack addiction binge over four days getting high, in and out of rooms, getting drunk, 
And it was a Sunday morning where people was going back and forth to church in the traffic. And when I seen it, I, something hit me and I know it was the Holy Spirit speaking to me. And I began to talk and I began, why do I have to live like this? Why do I have to be a drug addict? Why do I have to be an alcoholic? I'm gonna die as a drug addict. And it was right here where the Holy Spirit spoke to me and told me I did not have to die a drug addict. That no longer do I have to be a drug addict. All I had to do was surrender. That day forward, I gave my life to Jesus right here. And I made a commitment to Jesus and told him, I'm going to put what you want me to do before what I want to do. Whatever you want me to do, Jesus, I will do. And whatever I want to do, I put on the back burner. I answered the call right here. I didn't even know what I was saying, but I knew I was tired of living a life of drug, addiction, prostitution, homosexuality. I wanted to change. And I'm so glad that I said yes to Jesus. Right here. Obey right there completely. Because it's a fight, it's a daily struggle within. Because, because in order to follow Jesus, you gotta completely change. You gotta completely, you gotta just, your own way of doing things, your whole life. And everything, when God met me on Canal in Lego, and I said, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll put it before what I want to do. It didn't happen immediately. I continued to go out and prostitute and sell my body, do drugs, until one day, it was around about 12, 30, 1 o'clock at night, walking these Bayman streets right here on 2nd and Saeed. Where my destiny came and found me. My purpose came and found me. I was right here walking. I had walked holes in my shoes. I was broke hurting, miserable, didn't want to live. And two people came out to evangelize. And they was walking the streets around at that time of morning and they was handing out flyers and cards. They said, if you want, if you want to receive Jesus, if you're tired of being hooked on drugs and alcohol, if you want to change, if you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we have a home, we have a ministry for you. And I took that flyer, standing right here. Traffic was going on both, in both directions. And I needed to make up my mind and make a decision that I want to change. This could be the, the answer to prayer. This could be what I, my way out. And I took that flyer. I took that card standing right here. And I put that card and I said, I'm going to call and I'm going to give this place a try to see what they're talking about. Can this, can this place really help me? And nevertheless, I called this place. I called the home. It's a ministry home that was free of charge. They told me that all you have to have is a willingness to want to change, a heart to want to give up your drug addiction, a heart that want to give up the streets, the world, your old life. All you have to do is, is to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I made that call. I picked up the phone. I really wanted a change in my life. I was a no good, good for nothing, drug addict, homeless, stinking, could Jesus really change me? What's going through my head? This is where my life changed. When they gave me a card and I made the call, 
I took out walking with bags in my hand and I walked right here to 4,000 South Pitchu. And I walked up on the steps of this property right here. It's, it's an empty lot now. But at that time, it was a place full of the love of Jesus. The hearts was open, the home was open, and the refrigerator was open. And that was the beginning of God changing my life forever. It was in this home that I received the love of Jesus. It was in this home where I received correction. It was in this home that I was disciple. That I was disciple that I didn't have to live this life of drug addiction no more through leaders and pastors and those that really that really had a heart for a person like me who was on drugs and alcohol. I thank God that I had enough faith to come to the home and let Jesus change my life. I thank God. It happened right here. Well, as I look at the city of Fort Smith, the crime and the homelessness and the drug addiction that is running rampant in the streets and in the neighborhoods and all over the communities. Many of the people that's out there on the streets have given up hope. They have lost all hope. You know what I'm saying? Somebody came and told me, I didn't have to die on the streets. I was a drug addict too, man. I was homeless in these streets, man. And I, 20 years ago, and I'm glad the greatest gift, man, I said, the best decision I made Many of them have had challenging backgrounds and they feel like there is no hope. They have completely given up on life. And I really truly believe that our responsibility is to reach them at any cost, to let them know that not all hope is lost. See, there is a place that they can go and receive the love, receive help. That place is called Living Word Ministry Home of Arkansas. This place can give you give them the opportunity that they need. I believe this place can give them that new start in life where they can begin to start over again. See, when a man is sleeping on the ground, that can be the next pastor. Or, or, or that prostitute that's on that corner selling her body, she could be the next pastor's wife. See, that's the name of the game. It's to take them from being useless to being useful. And it all starts with sharing the love of Jesus Christ to each and every one of them that we come in contact with. A women's home? A Christian women's home where, where, where you can get off the streets free of charge. Right here in Fort Smith. Yes, I will. All right, Jesus love you. Okay. See, the home is the best kept secret in the whole world. See, the home is not for people who need the home. It's for people who want it. Because everyone needs it because of what it has to offer. See, the home is a place where you can expect a miracle. The moment you step through the door, the threshold, you can feel the presence of God so thick, man. Because it's saturated in prayer. It's saturated with lives who, are, who have been changed and who are being changed every day who's believing God for a miracle to change me from this from this uh, terrible habit of drug addiction, terrible habit of alcoholism. Save me from this anger. Take this anger from my life. Take this bitterness out of my heart. Just so many issues that we accumulate in life. And when we come to the home, 
we can learn how to trust God and, 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 and allow God to take those things away through prayer, through praise and worship, through studying the word of God and in Bible study and getting into his word and allowing the word to come in and heal our mind and heal our heart. See, it's nothing magical about the home. It's spiritual. It's a spiritual movement of God. And the home, that's why it's the best kept secret. See, I, I believe, you know, that, you know, we were sent on purpose from Texas to Fort Smith, Arkansas on a mission. And I believe that that mission is, a, is to, so that we can be a vital part of reaching the lost, reaching the ones that nobody else wants, reaching the, 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 the lowest of the low, the, the worst of the worst. And not only just reaching them, but also reaching their families. Our, our, our initial job is not complete until we have told everyone that is on the streets and addicted to drugs and alcohol and cigarettes and have low self-esteem, no hope and no faith. And we can tell them that Jesus loves them. So how you doing now? Oh, right better. I couldn't have done it, you know, without this house and these people. I'd still be out there. I'm glad you're here. Me too. I really am. <laughs> you know, uh, me coming into the home, uh, into a ministry home, was fairly new. You know, and it was, it was different, real different. And so, um, but being there, it changed my life. It changed uh, my perspective. It changed my attitude. It just everything that, um, you know, that I needed to get right before God. It begins to channel those things and get it right. And so with that, you know, I learned a lot by being in the home uh, I learned a lot of life skills, leadership, uh, development, and growth. And with that, I got a vision, you know, to become a pastor, to come into the ministry, to, to you know, to do the work of the Lord. And I myself had uh, received a passion and I believe a calling from the Lord to do a work for God, to reach the drug addicts, reach gang members, reach the homeless, reach the prisoners uh, and their families. And and that's the calling that God has given me and I'm grateful and it has been a journey. But one thing that I can say is that um, I haven't been able to do it by myself. Uh, uh, I've had a lot of help from my lovely wife, um, Tamika Henry, and uh, this is my lovely wife, and we've been married uh, going on now as of today, uh, 16 years uh, we've been together, and she helps a lot with um, the ministry administration, and, um, and also she walks alongside of me and helps me and partners with me to uh, carry out the call and the vision that's uh, all my life. And so uh, I'm excited about having my wife with me. And uh, it's been a ride, would you say? Yeah. <laughs> it's been a ride, it's been a ride. We have uh, been through some things together. Um, in ministry and in the home and it's 
has been a roller coaster. Uh, our marriage is very um, uh, complex, and it's a beautiful marriage. How we met, we met, and um, funny, we met in Greenwood, a little town called Greenwood, Texas. And I was working, and she was working, and from that we exchanged numbers, and um, we got we uh, got in touch with each other and called, and from that the rest is history. Uh, she is someone that I love, someone that I that I, I cherish, and I'm so glad that we um, that we're married and sharing our life together and not just our life but ministry you know and uh, lives together um, being a, I was in ministry before I met my wife so I was already kind of hitting the ground running my wife uh, just coming in uh, and really didn't understand the whole um, the whole idea, uh, the whole uh, concept of ministry as I did, but she was willing to learn. And so, which the early stages of our ministry, amen, that was a, a growth process and it was a learning process. Um, our first our first home, we, uh, we was on uh, 766 Havenwood. Uh, right there, we began to, it was a very uh, unique time where uh, the people uh, was coming in and God was blessing and moving. Uh, we At that time, we had opened up a men's and women's uh, ministry right there. We had a, a little, God had blessed us with a little three bedroom home and uh, in one room, we had six men. Uh, the bunks was full with six men uh, get coming in off the streets. And then the, another room was had six bunks with uh, about six children, and six women and children in that room. And then the next room was, of course, me and my wife's room. And we had men and women for really the first time in a long time, we've seen it to this degree uh, in one home uh, doing ministry and birthing out these ministry. And so, and it was going smooth and things, but you know, everything has a season. And then we moved from uh, Havenwood to where we moved the women to uh, a, another home God blessed us with on Woodshire, uh, and the women was there, and the men stayed on Havenwood, and we grew uh, of Woodshire and Havenwood, and then after uh, the Lord began to add and bring in men, uh, bring in women and men for the ministry, for the development of the ministry, and then from there uh, we opened up and went to a two-bedroom, to a two-story home on Shady Way. October the 10th, 2002 was the day I walked on the porch of the ministry home in South Dallas. I was broken. I was hurt. I was lost. I had no hope, no direction. I didn't know if I was coming or going. But all I knew is that I needed a change. I needed help. I needed to be free from this addiction, from this hurt and pain that I was feeling in my heart. And when I walked into that home, it was something that I had never seen before. I seen men that was with hands uplifted. They were jumping and singing and dancing and praising God and 
singing about this Jesus and how Jesus had set them free and how Jesus had broke the chains and the bondage of addictions off of their life. And all I knew is I wanted that. I wanted that experience that Jesus could change me, that I could really be free. And then I heard a powerful word from the pastor, which is my pastor now, Pastor Anthony Anderson. He came and spoke a word of deliverance, a word of power, a word that pierced me right in the heart, that dealt with me. And when I left that service, when I left that chapel service, I purposed it in my heart that I was not going back to the streets. I was not going back to drugs and alcohol and living the life of sin that I lived. That I wanted to experience this life-changing power of Jesus Christ. And through that, and because of that, God came and personally touched my life, spoke to me, healed me. Every hurt, every wound, every chain was broken, every yoke was destroyed because I allowed God to come in and change my life. It was through teaching the word of God. It was through prayer and it was through praise and worship. These are the principles that that in the home is done every day in order to develop a strong relationship with Jesus Christ. We have to have a lifestyle of prayer. We have to have a lifestyle of praise and worship and a lifestyle of studying the word of God so that we can become and our mind can be changed and become renewed in the presence of God. I'm so glad that there was leadership that had a heart to help, that had a heart to work with me, that had a heart to deal with me. Two things, when I stepped on that porch, was open up for me. The door and the refrigerator. And for that, I'm grateful. There is a major, major, major future for this work in ministry. And it's going to go far and beyond Fort Smith, Arkansas. We're going to take on other cities in Arkansas, like Little Rock, like Bentonville, like Fayetteville, and abroad, and even Oklahoma, Tennessee, Louisiana, Alabama, Georgia, Detroit, Virginia, Mississippi, and so many others. We're coming to a city and a state and a community near you.